In this video, we'll be discussing the graphic design trends and styles that you need to know this year. We're talking web design, posters, branding and packaging. So whether you're a seasoned designer or just starting out, these trends should give you some sparks of inspiration for your next project. First trend slash style on this list is neo-brutalism. Brutalism has been used in graphic design for a very long time. It often disregards traditional layout styles and principles using large blocks of text that may be difficult to read and high contrast in colors. It was originally popular in poster and graphic design, although some attempts were made in the late 90s to bring it to the web. Neo-brutalism combines traditional layout concepts with solid colors, simple yet unique typography. It's not afraid to use pure black with other colors. Yep, we're talking hashtag 000000. So we're talking bold, contrasty, raw, organic, materials. I actually quite like the resurgence it's had, the push to the more kind of colourful and playful direction that we're seeing in the UI of this app here. The not so great thing however is we've seen a whole bunch of brands rushing towards neo-brutalism and rebranding themselves in a pretty much similar manner. One that we all know is Gumroad. Don't really know why they rebranded to this to be honest. I don't feel like Neo-brutalism was the right road for them. <laughs> road, I feel like I've seen it too many times. And then I like the other extreme, which is the more refined minimalism look. We're talking playful, kind of modern type, but against the utilitarian look of minimalist design. We will also see a lot of pixels and then the more traditional neo-brutalist dark with the one gradient style. The next trend on the list is pop futurism. The 1980s are back, glows, gradients, textures, and an illustrated look. It's quite nice to see this as a resurgence, although I think we've not moved it on enough. One of the things you notice a lot about this pop futurism look is the use of glows and more textural feel of the illustration. One of the things that we're seeing a lot of in this specific style is a retro throwback to elements such as Game Boys, old school tech, things that actually bring the nostalgia back. The advancement on this trend and style that I really like is how it's being fused with the maximalism style where we are putting these retro illustrations and kind of overloading them to make pretty cool compositions, a bit more digital arty, but I think these things look awesome. The next trend we will continue to see this year is the Y2K evolution. The Y2K evolution refers back to the Y2K aesthetic, which is essentially the design style of the late 90s and early 2000s as we came into what I call new media or the internet. This aesthetic is a nostalgic style that basically draws on the elements of what it looked like to be alive on the early web, characterized by bright and bold colors, pixelated imagery, and cybernetic themes. With the Y2K aesthetic, you can expect to see plenty of holograms, metals, liquid metals, pixels, and a general dose of futurism. Things like the early Bjork artwork, a lot of throwback to the early internet windows. We see a lot of distorted type and holographic themes. One of my favorite uses of this in branding is the Lego and Levi's collaboration where they took the whole Y2K aesthetic, made it pixely using the Lego blocks and I think they just nailed the colors, the look and feel and the throwback nostalgia. A subtrend in itself is the liquid metals use. We're seeing a lot of chrome, liquid metals, graphics. The liquify tool is being heavily used in branded imagery and promo styles. Again, looking at the block colors. It was almost like it was early Japanese feel blended with the internet. Very pop arty general feeling of this aesthetic. The next style slash trend that we're seeing is what I'm calling typo fusion which is essentially just creative typography. Well, most trend lists that you've seen, or I certainly have seen, is either saying sans serif fonts are making a comeback or serif fonts are making a comeback. I think it's all rubbish. Typography in general is becoming a lot more experimental, expressive, and creative. Serif fonts, which are characterized with the top and bottom lines at the letters have definitely had a resurgence in the last few years. That trend in particular has been driven by the sense of security that the tradition of the serif itself evokes. And this is particularly important in today's world where most brand consumerism is predicated on trust. Further to this, we're seeing a lot of movement, especially this kind of retro 3D 
aesthetic. But the reality is not one font or the other font is taking a lead. They are both being used in equal measure by different people for different purposes. And again, I caveat all points when it comes to trends that it is how you use styles. The way that you design should solve a problem and not follow a specific trend. The next style or trend we are seeing is the return of retro vintage. This trend in graphic design is typified by early 1980s advertising style. This also pushes into the 90s a little bit more, taking in the texture of the grain, which is prominent in this visual style. We see a lot of geometric shapes and minimalist layout, a lot of refined simplification. We tend to see a lot of stickers and also line art. Like here, you can see the old school Nike ads, which use the big font Futura along with just a simple image and their logo. Absolute took their own spin on this by using the simplified grainy and refined aesthetic with the high contrast product photography which is also a micro trend in itself. Going wider into the retro vintage aesthetic we're starting to see a lot more line art. Yes we're talking the return of sign painter and some more of these cool cartoony graphics which were typified by 70s American design style. Stickers are a trend that we've been seeing emerge over the last couple years. They're everywhere and we'll continue to see more of this as they have a very useful role to play in branding. They are great for using as accents to a brand to extend the message or to bring something to life. Here's a really cool example of something more recent from Nike where they took some of those cues from earlier in the neo-brutalism where they had the simplified fonts interchanged with the imagery and then overlaid with some retro design. The next style and trend we're talking about is modern surrealism. As we spend more time in the digital world and less in physical places, the lines are getting blurred. Surrealism is an enduringly popular design approach because of its novelty and endless original weirdness. Lots of airbrushing, abstract shapes and textures. Some of the cool ways we're seeing modern surrealism at the moment is how brands are using this textured, almost painty type feel and those those work really well on the texture of cardboard when it's produced in a packaging and physical realm. The next style is what I'm calling still tripping or trippy. It's a little bit of an extension to modern surrealism, but really going more into psychedelic surrealism. Maybe because loads of people are doing micro dosing these days that this has become popular. But again, it's going back to that macro trend of escaping reality. So what we're seeing is a lot of kind of acid visuals, psychedelic illustrations, warped imagery and a general depiction of a dystopian world. Some really cool uses I've seen on this is taking some of the Y2K aesthetic and bringing it into this kind of new dimension. Brands like Sonos have taken the trippy psychedelic visuals and made them part and parcel of their core product photography which looks awesome and then we've got some more uses of the wacky illustrations in some of like the energy drinks and the beers and then we're just seeing some really cool like airbrushed trippy photos. Another cool application of the psychedelic visuals are taking the old retro stickers and obviously bringing that kind of 60s hippie nostalgia into the design and brands such as Meltdown are combining this really well on their packaging. The next style of trend that we are seeing is new maximalism. The last few years minimal trend has taken a bit of a U-turn. Designers are using this as an escape from uninspiring routines and restrictions. So we're seeing bold and explosive colors, optical illustrations and illusions, lots of shapes. It's just generally chaotic to be honest, but some of these brands are doing it really, really well. Wired done a really cool front cover with what lies ahead. And again, it's just evoking that feeling of chaos. In true designer style, there is now and then some organization in it, which we can all appreciate. It just looks beautiful, to be honest. Just a general mishmash of shapes and feeling. The next trend and style that we're seeing, this is a big one. It is artificial morphism. No, we're not talking skewomorphism or neomorphism. We're actually talking some sort of weird 
hybrid baby of both of them. Artificial morphism is making a huge impact right now. This incredible high fidelity design power that is coming from the likes of Dali are making huge waves by just creating this unbelievable surreal imagery which is both highly detailed, highly textured and it can just literally be any style you want but what we're seeing is a mishmash of this Van Gogh painting style being used in a, a modern form. Generally this generative way of creating art is actually really interesting and here's some really good examples of fonts that are being generated completely through AI and I mean the level of detail from some of this stuff is absolutely insane. Even in web design we're seeing like super high fidelity neo skuomorphic feeling interfaces because the texture and richness is more than what we were illustrating previously. I really love this series of AI generated sneakers. It's super, super cool. The next trend is photographic branding and I'm talking a little bit more macro here. We're really seeing a reversal away from the high contrasty images that we've seen from a lot of product photography over the last year. People are opting to engage more with realistic imagery and there's no surprise really the way video content has gone. The mass takeover of TikTok has had us looking at plain people on their iPhone camera, super flat, not the best cinematic videos we've seen and we're starting to see this bleed into photography as well and the way that brands are using it is they're taking more realistic photos that are less stylized and they're using them full screen big front and center with typography and some refined illustrations around it. The next trend and or style that we are seeing, this one's actually making a comeback. It's what I'm calling new grunge. And I might have lied earlier when I said brutalism was my favorite style. This one is the style that I started my design career on. And really it, it has to be making a comeback. The trend is all about rough, rugged and slightly vintage aesthetic, but we're talking distressed textures, muted colors, splats, sprays, scraps with the modern day war and activism being a part of the current culture and certainly the way that the Gen Z culture is taking it on. This graphic style has been seen a lot in esports and what we're seeing is some of the bigger sporting football clubs in like the Premier League adopting this esports aesthetic and applying it to their own football team's design and branding language. Next up is a style that I am calling modern mystic. There's been a recent trend towards incorporating mystic and otherworldly themes such as spirituality, astrology, magic and cosmic designs. What we're seeing is more abstract, illustrated and simplified symbolism and other elements that evolve a sense of mystery. This trend has been driven in part by advances in fields such as science, philosophy and spirituality and really it's manifesting in a range of design assets and templates including event illustrations, logos and branding like these matcha and coffee brands. I think the packaging looks awesome. The next trend is geo minimalism. This one's been around for a while and we're continuing to see it. It's the use of geometric shapes, simplified typography, vivid primary colors and blocked off graphics. I particularly like the way that it's being used as a trend against the kind of illustrations that we were seeing all over the internet and making those illustrations more refined to work within a wider brand system. The use of these geometric shapes with some more abstract shape creates this kind of modern futuristic a feel which I really like. The next design style is utilitarian or what I'm calling minimal utilitarian. Overall this has been a design style around forever and I think we'll continue to see its use as people create more functional products that need to deliver the message of their functionality in a clear and concise manner. This design is often used in products and environments where practicality and communication are important such as industrial equipment, medical devices and public transportation. Again, this bold, minimal, graphic and uniform style has been applied to many things in cosmetics as they try to convey that kind of utilitarian use. More interestingly, we've seen it on some other products like water and in general, this kind of approach is almost a bit like anti-branding. It's the deconstruction of all this noise and other visual elements to communicate a product in its simplest form. One of my favorite products is something that I still use today, which I think is discontinued and it's unit portable 
vegetables. This Swedish design style was very utilitarian and it just was really a great functioning product. The next graphic design style that we're going to continue to see big in the next year is neoclassical. This trend is all about using elements of classical art and architecture in modern designs, taking inspiration from this old school classic art and architecture of ancient Greece and Rome. It's characterized typically by the use of symmetry, rectolinear forms, and a restrained geometric ornamentation. I really like these modern takes on the neoclassical design, which fuses some of the modern geosimplicity in with these classical shapes and elements. It's a timeless and sophisticated style that conveys a sense of tradition and stability. The next design style that we're seeing get a hell of a lot of traction is Art Deco. It's a design that originated in the 1920s and when we talk about Art Deco, most people think of cool Miami buildings, hotels, but it's recently gaining popularity again. It's a design style that combines geometric, bold shapes and a lavish and refined feel. More recently, the modern take on the Art Deco style sees us fusing some of those earlier retro elements and the texture and grain of these illustrations with a kind of more playful typographic tape on the Art Deco font. We're seeing this used a lot in kind of makeup branding, which is moving away from the utilitarian minimal aesthetic. And here are some really cool examples that show a more minimal and geometric take on the Art Deco aesthetic. The last trend is Art Nouveau and Art Nouveau in style type and aesthetics. This is a style that emerged in the late 19th century. It's characterized by a focus on organic, flowing lines and curves. We see a lot of organic natural illustrations in this style and it's really a kind of refined retro feeling but it also looks really sophisticated. Maya's a really cool tequila brand that have implemented this style perfectly. And Espresso Republic have taken this a step further by refining the aesthetics of Art Nouveau and creating a utilitarian feel to the design and packaging. A lot of these trends work really well if you're creating a new brand. And if you want to see how I created a brand from start to finish using some of these trends, check out this video right here.